I don't think I've skated in China. I think it's the first time I'm on ice in China. My name is Lance. Oh, your name is Lance, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My name is Laszlo Vajda, I'm from Hungary originally, working for the Olympics in different countries and continents and cities. Uh, I've been in China since 2005, May, so I came here directly from the Athens Organizing Committee from Greece, and um, I never left. Since Laszlo was experienced in organizing international sports events, in 2005, he was invited by China to help with the 2008 Beijing Summer Olympics preparatory work. And this is the Paralympics for 2008, as you can see. I looked a little younger then. I never had a moment in time for the last 15 years where I felt I would just leave and go somewhere else. Actually, I'm planning to stay and I'm hoping to stay too. And I was very glad already back in 2005 and 6 and then 7 and then 8 we did the games. Uh, it, was, it was a fantastic period of time in my life, for sure. And ever since, because China kept me and I stayed. After the 2008 Beijing Olympics, Laszlo settled down in Beijing and continued to help with other international sports events, including the 2010 Guangzhou Asian Games and the 2014 Nanjing Youth Olympic Games. Today, Laszlo works for the Beijing Winter Olympics Organizing Committee as a senior expert. I must say I'm quite proud, although I'm not Chinese, obviously, but I feel for the pride of, of China having Beijing the only and the first city to host both games, the summer and the winter. I think it's a very nice emotional kind of historical fact and then people will look back to Beijing always as the first city. When asked about the latest progress of the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics, Laszlo spoke highly of the preparatory work, especially stadium construction. Nonetheless, he admitted that there would be certain challenges in the future. As far as I know, and I know internally, I don't think we really had even any delays. We had some small ones, but they were all within the tolerance of, of, of such projects. So we deliver in every venue on time, as we promised years ago, before the virus came. And we keep that promise. So it's not theory. It's not a slogan. It's not a kind of hope or dream. It's, it's a reality. So I find it fascinating. We have three zones, as most people know. It's Beijing, Yanting, and Zhangjiakou. So definitely the distance and the movement of the clients, not just the athletes, but all the clients, the, the service personnel, and the spectators among the zones will definitely be a challenge. The second is climate. Snow, to be very simple. We need snow. You need temperature, obviously, and you need the infrastructure. We have the infrastructure, but we can't manage temperature. So that's a big challenge, and obviously the pandemic. I think one of our biggest tasks at the moment here is to keep doing what we've been doing and have a very keen eye on what Tokyo is going to do. As a foreign expert on Beijing Winter Olympics Organizing Committee, Laszlo said he and his colleagues have been keeping in close contact with the Japanese Olympic Committee and the International Olympic Committee. Beijing is ready, for sure. We know that the venues are ready. Um, some of the so-called non-competition venues are still under construction, but it's just the last touches. So by summer, everything will be ready. Inside the organization, I see we are ready to operate, to deliver. So I have no doubt that we will deliver something fantastic next year. Do you want to go around? He was showing me some of his technique. I wish I can do those. It's really good. It's not easy. You need strong legs, muscles for that. My expectation is similar to officials and other people in the industry that the winter sports will remain popular. So it's not just a one-off 
uh, event, but hopefully the legacy will remain. So, children, like my new friend, David, and the next generations can enjoy this.